Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, and distinguished guests from overseas. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Sri V. Murli Dharanji, Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs, in our midst today. Your presence, uh, Minister, in this important conference focusing on India's neighborhood policy, despite your busy schedule, is testimony to the importance attached by the Ministry of External Affairs uh, to our neighborhood. It is the Ministry of External Affairs that implements India's neighborhood first policy, and I'm sure the proceedings of this uh, conference would be of great interest to you and your colleagues uh, uh, in the implementation of our foreign policy. Uh, I do believe that a review from time to time is necessary and it is also helpful to all of us in trimming our sails and navigating uh, and charting the correct course uh, for engagement uh, in the neighborhood. By way of a short background, uh, I wish to inform you that IDSA has been organizing the South Asia Conference uh, annually since 2007, and we have tried to engage our counterparts uh, in the neighborhood at the track two level in a dynamic dialogue uh, over the last uh, 13 years. Uh, through this conference, we provide a platform for scholars, academicians, officials, diplomats, uh, even ambassadors representing their countries in India uh, to come together at IDSA uh, on a common platform and to exchange views in a very candid and forthright manner uh, to deal with uh, issues uh, of common concern and to also recommend measures uh, that can be taken to strengthen regional cooperation. So it's an exercise with a purpose. Our experience so far has been quite rewarding. We wish to complement uh, uh, the government's efforts, uh, both complement and complement the government's uh, efforts aimed at reaching out to our neighbors uh, to ensure that India's neighborhood first policy uh, brings us the best possible results, the best possible gains for all of us. Yesterday, we had the good fortune of having the Honorable Defense Minister uh, Rakshamantri Ji, Sri Rajnath Ji, deliver the inaugural address uh, at our opening session. And today we are eagerly uh, awaiting uh, the Minister of State um, and we are looking forward to your sharing your perceptions and uh, perspectives with us. Uh, uh, the first day of the conference, if I may fill you in, uh, that will help you as well to uh, gauge uh, what has transpired so far. The first day of the conference witnessed excellent presentations and lively discussions on the concept of uh, neighborhood first and the underpinning provided by economic engagement and connectivity. It is not our objective to ensure 100% consensus on any issue, far from that. There are bound to be different uh, perceptions and uh, there were different viewpoints uh, expressed yesterday as well. We welcome that. Uh, since we are keen to see a heart-to-heart -heart dialogue through which India and its neighbors can deepen mutual understanding and build a sustainable framework for further uh, engagement and uh, further deepening and enhancement of our cooperation. Sri Rajnath Singh Ji, our Defense Minister, very wisely advised us, uh, that was uh, very sagacious uh, uh, on his part, to tell us to think for a moment as South Asians uh, for the common good uh, to really get out of our skins as, as individuals from a particular country and go beyond our national identities to forge a new kind of consensus uh, uh, between us. And during the deliberations yesterday, both at the formal and informal levels, we have noticed a marked appreciation among our guests for India's foreign and security policies, with elements of an India-first policy on their part that reciprocates um, uh, the kind of uh, uh, you know, engagement that we do, uh, even though India's neighborhood policy does not seek strict reciprocity. So that is heartwarming for us to see that there is a natural response that's being elicited. We do good unto others, and we automatically uh, have others doing good unto us. On the first day, we explored the conceptual basis of India's neighborhood first policy and the state of economic and developmental partnerships, as well as connectivity and infrastructure development in the region, with India naturally playing a pivotal role. We noticed that there was a spontaneous desire uh, to harmonize the neighborhood policies of our neighbors with our own neighborhood first policy. I mean, that's a natural uh, inclination and proclivity that our neighbors have. And I think that's something that we should also encourage. 
Uh, there was also a willingness to benefit from India's developmental diplomacy. There was appreciation that India's neighborhood policy seeks to accommodate the priorities and sensitivities of neighboring countries. That is in keeping with the fact that India's neighborhood policy is neither mercantilist nor predatory. I mean, that's a very key point that I wish to make. Um, at the same time, as we go forward in implementing our neighborhood policy, we may have to constantly recalibrate our efforts uh, and our options, keeping in mind the changing needs of our neighbors, uh, for it's a dynamic situation as they evolve, as we evolve, and the turns and shifts in the geopolitics uh, of the region as well. Uh, our deliberations yesterday revealed that our neighbors have identified delivery deficit uh, as an important issue that interferes with India's efforts to fulfill their developmental aspirations. I know that we have done much better than in the past, but obviously there's scope to do much better. And we take those suggestions in the right spirit as well. They do not doubt our intentions, but have genuine concerns about our ability to implement our policies in an expeditious manner. Our attention was drawn to the Chabahar project, and it was emphasized that there was an urgent need to build supportive infrastructure to make the venture a success. Uh, most of the uh, participants uh, held that at the moment the governments in the neighboring countries uh, were sensitive to India's security concerns even if they were open to the idea of engaging China and other countries as alternative options for their own development. I and mean, that's a fact of life, we have to deal with it. The larger question therefore is whether connectivity in our region will be a key to uniting us or will it be the focus of a new great game. India's sensitivities in this regard are well known. But how do we address the ambivalence felt by some of our neighbors with regard to the growing presence and activities of an extra regional power like China? So that's one of the questions that's likely to be thrown up today as well. While India may not seek strict reciprocity in its relations with neighbors, yet one of the fundamental requirements for building better cooperative architecture in the region is that neighbors remain sensitive to India's key concerns. And I suppose that will be taken on board by all our friends and colleagues who have come in from uh, overseas. In leveraging their own strategic autonomy, our neighbors are conscious that they would also have to keep in mind India's fundamental concerns. Yesterday, the question of the future of SARC too came up. Some lamented that it had not lived up to its potential. At the same time, there was also appreciation that it was stunted due to the non-cooperation of a particular country that has thwarted regional trade and connectivity and preferred to use terrorism as a tool in the conduct of its own foreign policy. India has displayed its commitment to participate in the growth and development of individual countries and the region and to enable a web of relationships among states to unleash the latent economic potential of the region. Regional economic integration can provide the binding glue for structures that ensure peace and collective prosperity. I think therein lies the key. Currently, intra-South Asian, tree, uh, intra -South Asian uh, trade, uh, I beg your pardon, is abysmally low. If the economic complementarities of different states were to be aligned in a harmonious manner, we could actually change that in favor of a better future for all of us. In the sessions today, Honorable Minister, we will discuss country perspectives on energy cooperation and the defense and security outlook of different states. We are looking forward to the final session, that is in the afternoon, which will also sum up the perspectives uh, from different states, particularly on the way forward. Uh, it's an outcome-oriented exercise, and we intend to put together all the deliberations of the conference and the papers presented uh, as an outcome report, uh, which we will share uh, for possible use by policymakers and analysts. With these uh, words, Honorable Minister, I now request you to share your views with the participants. Thank you very much.